Luna Rossa. Just revealed and launched, but not sailed their race AC75. So I'm sure you're dying to know how does it compare to the boats we've already seen. If you've not watched already, we've seen Alinghi's Boat 1 and we've seen the Kiwi's yet unnamed AC75. And now this is the third boat. They've gone for an all mirror chrome finish, which looks fantastic, harks back to the boats for previous cups. So what's different about this boat? I think generally the way I describe it is it's got less forced lines, um, just generally smoother throughout. For me, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but for me, this does make it a, look, a lot nicer um, boat just to look at. Maybe it's a paint job on it with it being all chrome. Maybe the paint job on uh, Team New Zealand's boat, a little bit more blocky and out there and yeah, not as sympathetic to the eye. But this, um, yeah, this chrome finish looks good and the lines look smoothed out. Um, I think, not sure if it was uh, Max or Bertrelli said it was from a similar design philosophy as Emirates Team New Zealand, probably further away from Lingi. I mean, I would, to a degree, agree with that. Um, you know, I think all the boats have got their separate flavours, so let's talk about a few of those. So I think where this Lunar Rossa boat is similar to Emirates Team New Zealand is that it's got, it's not got a really deep trench deck like we saw on Terahutai, but it has got a more blended, scooped out middle, and it's definitely got a, um, a lower deck, because we can see there is a mast extension on, so it's got um, a raised mast ball, although we didn't see it without a mast on, so we can't confirm that, but we can see what I think in this picture shows the mast kind of like stepping tool going up inside the mast. It is a legacy mast on this, but you can see they've um, kind of changed it to add a little step on the bottom. So I think that's quite similar, whereas Lingi had kind of sharper sides to their pods and more of a more similar trench to what we saw on Teruhutai. But elsewhere, I'd say that this boat, Luna Rossa, is keeping some of the um, legacy from their previous race boats in that they don't have an obvious bustle step in their hull. Um, whereas if you look at both Alinghi and um, Emmett's Team New Zealand's new boat and Terahutai, you'll see that there is kind of like an obvious kind of like two staging to the hull through, especially through the mid to the aft where it goes in through quite a flat section. Then you go down into the bustle, rounded bustle, and a little bit of a moth hull type bustle. And then you've got the skeg, a thin skeg running along the bottom. The only exception to this is at the back end where they have got a small bit of um, kind of boxier moth hall type bustle, similar to what we had on Terahutai, but nowhere near as extreme as what we've got on, um, on the new Emirates Team New Zealand boat or even on a lingi where they have a full kind of moth hull section going all the way back. Um, and the penalty that um, Luna Rossa pay for this is that they have to have some of their rudder workings, their rudder um, uh, kind of pitch control above deck because they've not got as much um, kind of skeg or bustle below to house those rudder workings. Um, the upside of that is they've got a little bit of rocker at the back end in the... Um, in the bustle of the skeg in the bottom and a more immersion for any giver ridden ridden deck which should make them a little bit easier to turn into displacement mode um but then they've got some aero penalty and they've got kind of a larger frontal area to house and those rudder workings above deck though it does look like they've done a pretty good job of keeping this relatively contained we're not seeing the big kind of supporting arms for the top bearing surface of the rudder like we saw um, on the previous generation boats i think the other you know big talking point for me um we couldn't see much of the control systems or the mass step area just from the angles we got from the recon and from the um and the videos released um, we can see the pods, it looks like two longer pods aft and looking at the rule we know larger pods are for the, um, the cyclists so they're given minimum size for these kind of pods and the apertures 
Um, so they use crew zones effectively, and if you the crew can't put any body parts outside of their crew zone, and then the aperture at the top of their crew zone projected upwards is basically that crew zone with like a 50 mil lip in all around. So the spaces you're seeing in the deck, the openings is basically this, the space that the, the crew members got um, projected down below. One thing we do see that's quite interesting in terms of the crew zones for Luna Rossa is these panels in front of the forward most person near the side stays. Um, and um, that to me, I think is gonna be a tinted screen that either the driver or the trimmer can see through. And I'm not sure yet exactly what configuration people have gone for. Definitely it's the um, it's the cyclos at the aft, and then you've got the helm and the trimmer. Um, should really be helm and mainsail trimmer, you'd imagine, on the windward side, and then flight control and jib trimmer on the leeward side. And I'm not sure which way round those roles will be between the two people, but either way, it looks like the forward person has a screen. And that is something we also saw on a Lingi, although it's pretty hard to spot in the um, dark footage, but as it comes out the shed and is backlit, you can see, I think, what is a screen there as well. Now, with the rules, the crews won't be able to tuck into that screen at all, but they will be able to shelter behind it and get a little bit better visibility. Because we do see when Emirates Team New Zealand are sailing, they've definitely got two clear heads popped up above the, um, the apertures of their cockpit sticking out quite a way and I was expecting more people to be a bit more tucked down um, in this cycle than what I've seen on uh, Team New Zealand. What we do know from the boat is that they're all legacy appendages but the foil arms have definitely been modified whether they are the next generation foil arms or they are previous generation foil arms but with new fairings. I'm not sure of that completely. Um, but the fairings are definitely different to what they have. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting to see it on the water because there is so much, as soon as all the control systems are hooked up, so much more we can learn about these boats as we're seeing from Emirates Team New Zealand at the moment. Do I think it's the fastest boat so far? Honestly, I'd be lying if I said it was possible to tell, but I think it's certainly the best looking. I'm sure everyone could have an opinion on that, so get involved in, in the comments. Um, also got another video coming out soon, something super interesting I've seen in the um, Emirates Team New Zealand uh, docking out, so uh, keep an eye out for that and um, subscribe if you want more America's Cup tech videos.